Good morning. We do apologize that uh, that we've had to give you a little bit of a turnaround here. Um, it turns out that this week um, we are we are preaching on peace. Uh, therefore, uh, it seems like there had to just be a little bit of interruption and disruption in our morning uh, as we as we started it. So as we do that, we will settle ourselves into worship today with a few brief announcements. Today is Mother's Day. Welcome to worship mothers um, and children and. Um, and everybody, we are so glad to be worshiping with you on, on this Sunday morning, um, and uh, and we're excited to get to get going again as we as we do this uh, this this social distance worshiping one more time. Well, actually, we'll be here a few more weeks as well. There. Um, otherwise, if you are interested in making uh, masks, if you have those sewing skills, which I clearly do not. Um, I can't even put a button back on my shirt, but if you are interested um, in creating some masks for people who, who need them, we are, we are collecting them at the church. If you need supplies, please let us know. Um, we, would love, um, we would love to be able to provide our community um, with some masks um, that, that some people are just not able to make for themselves or are not able to provide for themselves. And so we'd, we'd be, if you, again, if you, have, if you need supplies, give us a call. If, um, if you're making them and would like to drop them off, we'll be collecting them from the church over the next week um, or longer, actually. Um, I believe those are most of the announcements I have this morning. Um, we are in a series about the fruit of the Spirit. We have been studying about um, what the fruit of the Spirit are. We've, we've looked at joy and love, um, and this week we're looking at peace. To go along with our sermon series, our meditations provided by, Sof by Sophia Sutherland, and she's been providing those on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We hope that you're joining us in that practice um, as, we, as we do 10 to 15 minutes of, of meditation three times a week, just as we talk about what, it's, what it means to have the Spirit in us and how that changes us. Um, as Christians. And so, therefore, um, please um, look into those. You can, you'll be getting an email. You should be getting an email from us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and they're all located on our website as well. Those are the announcements we have this morning. As we begin worship, we have the reading of our central scripture to our entire series, Galatians 5, 22 to 25, this time um, with a special Mother's Day theme. But the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, happiness, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, uh, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified self with its passions and desires. We live by the spirit, and it's also be guided by the spirit. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! join us in our opening prayer this morning. It will be on your screen in just a minute. We invite you, we invite you to pray the words that are in bold. There we are. Let us pray together. Come Holy Spirit, fill us 
live in us, move through us, bear your good fruit in our lives, that we may live God's way. Where we are guided by prejudice, fill us with love. Where we are guided by pessimism, fill us oh, with joy. Where we are guided by worry, fill us with peace. Where we are guided by hurriedness, fill us with patience. Where we are guided by anger, fill us with kindness. Where we are guided by revenge, fill us with goodness. Where we are guided by desire, fill us with faithfulness. Where we are guided by volatility, fill us with gentleness. Where we are guided by hunger, fill us with self-control. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us. Live in us. Move through us. Amen. Amen. We invite you to join us in singing uh, a new song for most of us. It's called Oceans. Um, I, it's a beautiful song. We hope um, that you'll enjoy singing along with us. Be made strong. 
before we begin our children's time this morning, we want to acknowledge all of the mothers in our community, all of the women even in our community who, who love us so well. And therefore, we have a special Mother's Day video for you, a special video specifically related to what it's like to being a mother at this time uh, during our social distancing stuff. And so I invite you um, to please enjoy this as the, as the children gather for children's time. I invite you to please enjoy this video, mothers, um, as we celebrate you. Mother's Day looks a lot different this year. <sighs> Mommy needs a quarantine. And our moms may be spending a lot of time with their kids right now. A lot. Like, so, so much time. And even though they love their kids to the moon and back, Mommy, where are you going? Sometimes moms need a little alone time. Mommy! You know, to recharge. Go talk to Daddy. Mommy! Where are you? Tonight I just keep on laughing. The knocking on my door. Mommy! Are you home now? Mommy! But no matter what's happening in the world, their favorite way to spend time is with their family. In good times, in hard times. Mom! Hi. You're breaking everything! In uncertain times. Thank you, Mom, for making time for us every single day. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I ask that you would watch over us as we go to bed and rest, that you'd speak to us in Bible stories and speak to us in... All right, well, I hope that everybody has enjoyed the um, little video. Definitely um, showed some chaotic times and I found that uh, very appropriate for um, a day of peace because our, uh, our uh, sign language is very much about that specific topic. So today, our, our word for this week is peace. And I don't know about you, but um, it hasn't been truly completely peaceful every moment of the day. And uh, sometimes they're definitely more chaotic, such as right now, where everybody's all around me on this wonderful Mother's Day. Um, but when, when we have things not going our way, for example, this is not exactly how we anticipated a service going today. And um, sometimes that makes our hearts go, ah! And it's kind of chaotic inside us, and sometimes it's chaotic in the world. And so peace, is, is when all of that chaos becomes kind of calm. And so in, in relation to that, we can have peace in the midst of the chaos. So there's a, there's a story in the Bible where there's a storm going on and it's called chaotic and Jesus is sleeping. And, he, and the disciples are not okay with that because they are having a lot of trouble in the chaotic storm. And Jesus gets up, wait, they wake him up. They're like, why are you sleeping? And Jesus comes up and goes, oh, peace. And the waves and the wind stop and there's peace. And so that is what we can experience with Jesus. We can have his exact same peace, even in the midst of our chaos and our storms. So today I want us to learn our third word in American Sign Language. Are you ready? So remember the fruit of the spirit. I have to have you sit up, babe, because I need my hands. So remember, we use our, we make the F with our right hand and we use our left hand and we put it together and we push it out. The fruit of the spirit is love. Now remember your face is next when you have to be really happy. 
Joy. Joy. Right? Joy. Now the next one is peace. You can't be in my lap right now. And the peace is you, um, just a second. Just a second. Okay. Peace is where you make, I have to remember, sorry. <sighs> you take your right hand on your left hand and you go like this and you're going to twist it. So basically that means you're changing, becoming, transforming. And go like this, make it like an A. Yeah. And that means yeah. calm. Okay. Now your face can't be going calm, right? Because that's not calming. So you go becoming calm. Okay. So that's peace. Peace. All right. So let's peace. start at the very beginning. Remember, the fruit Oops. of the spirit is, is love, love, joy, peace. peace. And we'll learn the next one next week. Okay, let us pray. Five fingers on your right hand, five fingers on your left hand, 10 fingers folded together in prayer. Father God. Father God. We thank you so much. We thank you so much. For teaching us. For teaching us. And guiding us. And guiding us. We thank you. We thank you. For your spirit. For your spirit. We ask today. We ask today. That you increase our love. That you increase our love, our joy, our joy, and our peace. And our peace. May we serve you today. May we serve you today with glad hearts. With glad hearts. Help us to show our mothers. Help us to show our mothers how much we love them. How much we love them. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As as we celebrate the, the love, joy, and peace that God gives us, we're going to sing together. Um, I've got peace like a river. Please join us. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, and I've got peace like a river in my soul. And I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. Good morning and welcome again to worship. We're glad if you've been able to join us that you did. And if you're watching this on the recording, we're glad for that as well. Any way we can worship together these days is a good way. And I don't know about you all, but for me, it's going to be helpful if we pray together as we begin the message this morning. So let's pray. God of holy presence, breathe in us that we might know your peace that passes our understanding, that extends beyond our expectations and fills us with the knowledge and the joy of the depth of your love. In Jesus Christ we live. Amen. Now, I imagine that our key fruit of the Spirit passage is becoming for you somewhat familiar, hopefully. We're in week three now, and that passage comes from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 <laughs> through 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, 
joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Now, the intent of our study of the fruit of the Spirit is to learn what it means to live God's way, to keep in step with God's Holy Spirit. And at the core of that living lie these nine characteristics, these qualities that it turns out we don't achieve by our own power. I'm going to keep reminding us of that. For all of us who are prone to living our whole lives on an accomplishment failure continuum, it's important to remember that we don't achieve these qualities of the fruit of the Spirit by working harder or being better. These qualities, like fruit, are grown in us by the Spirit's power over time, given to us and nurtured by God. So our attempt to live God's way is much more about paying attention to God's Holy Spirit, making room for what the Spirit is trying to do inside of us. And in this week of the series, we are paying attention to the third listed fruit of the Spirit, which is peace. Now, if you've got this one all figured out, feel free to go on about your business for the day. Some people do. For some people, it comes more naturally, this peace thing. They have it down. But for the rest of us, it can, they even, can seem a little weird. The scripture passage that we're going to read in a minute calls it the peace that passes all understanding. I like to think of it as the peace that just doesn't make any sense. It's weird. It's hard to understand. It's illogical. In the fall of the year 2000, I was living in a ratty first apartment in Sherman, Texas, when my mom, who lived then in New Mexico, reached me on my foot-long cell phone with the alarming news that my dad was in the hospital because he had a heart attack. It had evidently gone down like this. He was a pastor and was going to visit somebody at the hospital, but as he was parking the car, he felt a little bit strange. And so he thought, rather casually, he'd just go on over to the emergency room entrance and let them check him out. Which is how he came to casually walk through the door of an emergency room, probably with a book and a cup of coffee in his hand while having a heart attack. When I got to speak to, directly to him on the phone a few hours later, he had reportedly been having quite an interesting time there in the hospital. He was seeing if he could intentionally slow his heart rate enough to set off the alarms on the machine he was hooked up to. I think this was amusing to the nurses, but less so to my mother. It has been nearly 20 years since that phone call, but I remember asking him how he was doing, you know, with his heart almost stopping, life potentially ending and all. And he answered, sounding just like my father, I feel such a sense of peace. Really? This is a piece that passes all understanding. <clears throat> Let's go now to that Bible passage. It's in the book of Philippians, which is another book written by the Apostle Paul, chapter 4, beginning at verse 4. Incidentally, you're going to hear three of the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in these few verses. A reminder of how all these qualities grow in us together. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The fact that the peace of God passes all understanding is not going to keep us from attempting to understand it a bit today. And a good starting point for that, I think, is the analogy presented in the song that we just sang together. I'm not sure that I've ever sung 
I've got peace like a river in a formal worship service. If you can call me standing in my living room talking to a cell phone and you sitting on your couch in your PJs, a formal worship service. I am much more accustomed to singing this song around a campfire or with hand motions. I've got peace like a river. I've got love like an ocean. I've got joy like a fountain. Anybody? Anybody? Who knows? But whatever the situation, the songs seem particularly fitting for this week, included all three of the qualities of the fruit of the spirit that we've covered so far. Peace, joy, love. And the analogy, I think, of peace like a river is an apt one. It's really an accurate analogy for this peace that we are talking about. It's peace like a river. Now, maybe at first glance, peace like a pond would make more sense. I mean, if you picture a pond, not the stagnant, gross kind, but a lovely, peaceful pond in a grassy meadow somewhere, maybe a few trees shading the edge of the water, glassy, smooth surface, not a ripple in sight, reflecting back a beautiful blue sky. That's peaceful, right? Not a river that sometimes drifts slowly, but up around the bend suddenly tosses and roils over the rocks, forming rapids, unpredictable eddies, even crashing over waterfalls, cutting ruthlessly away at the side of a canyon. That doesn't sound quite as peaceful, does it? And yet, the idea of peace like a river, rather than a pond, points us to the true nature of this peace, which is not simply stillness, or endless calm. It is not perpetually smooth sailing. Instead, the kind of peace that we're talking about today, this peace is confidence and trust in God's wise control of your life, independent of circumstance. Like a river, peace isn't still, but it flows undeterred by circumstance. As such, peace is marked not so much by passivity as by strength. Now, if each of these qualities of the fruit of the spirit has an opposite, then the opposite of peace is anxiety. In our passage, Philippians 4, 6, it says, do not worry about anything or do not be anxious. And that Greek word for anxiety there means literally to be in pieces. And so it says, do not be in pieces, do not be broken up. And so this isn't simply the normal amount of care or concern you might have for someone you love. Instead, it says, don't be torn up, don't be torn into pieces. And instead, let the peace of God against all logic, independent of your circumstances, Guard your hearts and your mind. The opposite of being in pieces, of being anxious, is single-mindedness, is peace. Steady confidence and trust in God's wise control of your life. The kind of confidence that lets a person say with wires running to the heart that's keeping their, them alive and not doing a very good job of it, I feel such a sense of peace. You see, this peace of God isn't still. It flows with single-minded strength, like a river undeterred by circumstance. And second, like every river, it has a source. Our peace comes from God, from the reality of who God is, and our knowledge of that. You can hear it in that definition I've been giving of peace, that it's the confidence in God's wise control of our lives. The source of our peace is the reality that we have ultimately been rescued and redeemed by Jesus Christ, that the main thing that really matters is taken care of. And the confidence that we have in the promise that God has good plans for us. That God loves us enough to stay with us through whatever rocks and rapids may come. The peace that the Holy Spirit grows in us has God as its source. God whose goodness 
and grace and power are worthy of our confidence. And so what keeps us from anxiety, from falling to pieces, is returning to and surrendering to that source. And that begins to get us to practically how we might cultivate this peace in our lives. How to do that is embedded in the Philippians chapter 4 passage. Rejoice in the Lord, Paul says. And that's an exhortation to pay attention to the source, to remember the goodness and grace and power of God, to exult in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Paul puts it a little bit differently a few verses later, but it's the same idea in verse 8. He says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Now, when Paul writes that, he doesn't actually just mean whatever comes to mind. When he says, whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, worthy of praise, he's talking about the ways of God. Because to Paul, what is just and true and worthy of praise is our God. And so he says, think about those things. When your mind is edging toward worry, to the kind of anxiety that breaks you into pieces and makes you fall apart, instead, fill it up with truth, with what is pure and pleasing. Rejoice in the Lord. Remind yourself of who God is and how much he loves you. The practice of meditation that Sophia has been leading us through for the last couple of weeks is one of, this, of one, is one of the ways that we can do that. One of the ways that we can fill our minds with what is true and worthy of praise. It is a seemingly simple but powerful act of pausing, of paying attention to our hearts and our minds and listening carefully to scripture hearing again what is true about God and God's goodness toward us. That is a way of rejoicing in the Lord. In fact, when Paul says in Philippians 4, 8, think about these things, that word think doesn't mean just in a passing sort of way. It means to think deeply on, to gnaw on, to ponder, or to meditate on these things. And so meditation is one of the practical ways to cultivate the peace of God in our lives. Another way that Paul suggests for us is prayer. <laughs> he says, do not worry about anything, but in everything, that means in every circumstance, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Supplication is asking God for something, to supply something. That's what kind of prayer this is. And notice that Paul says to accompany that asking with thanksgiving, which is a little bit counterintuitive. Usually we would ask for something, and then when we received it or saw the result of our request, then we would give thanks. And instead, what Paul writes is that we are to ask God and thank God in the very same breath. And the reason for that is, that when we ask and thank without ever knowing when or how God answers our request, we are bearing witness to the first step of rejoicing in the Lord. Because when we give thanks without ever seeing God's response, we are saying we know the God who is good to us, who will respond for our good and, our, and his glory even before we see the result of our request. And so we rejoice in the Lord, remembering and recalling his goodness and grace and providence. And then we pray with simultaneous request and thanksgiving, knowing that God's answer will be good. This practice of combined trust and gratitude brings peace. Paul writes, rejoice in the Lord. Don't let anxiety rule you. Instead, Pray with thanksgiving, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's not meant to be a magic formula, but it is a promise. 
these patterns cultivate peace in our lives. Peace that shapes the world around us, like a river cuts new paths or deepens its banks or carves canyons out to shape the landscape around it. As we consider the fruit of the Spirit in our own individual lives, we should always be keeping an eye on the orchard. And by that I mean that while the Holy Spirit grows these qualities in our individual lives, the context of those, those verses in Galatians 5 is also perhaps even primarily a corporate context. The Spirit bears this fruit in us together in the context of community. And so when we talk about peace, we aren't just talking about our own inner peace, but also about the way that peace flows from within us into the world around us. We become a people of peace. When Paul spells out the fruit of the Spirit, just before that, you remember, he also spells out the fruit of the flesh, the fruit of our sinful nature. And that includes enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, and factions. You see, if we live according to our sinful nature, which is the alternative to living according to the Spirit, if we live according to our sinful nature, our life together will be marked by division, by enmity, by warring factions. But in contrast to that, when we live according to the Spirit, when the Spirit of God rules our life together, our life together is marked by peace. Walls come down, relationships are healed, differences still exist, but they do not decide the day. Impossibly and improbably, we love our enemies and live at peace with one another. Like a river that shapes and reshapes the land around it as it flows, the peace of God growing in us has the potential to shape the world around us. You see, we, both individually and together, become instruments of peace in a world that desperately, desperately needs the peace of God. Friends, I invite you to pray with me today as we close this message. I'll be praying the prayer of St. Francis. You may have already heard echoes of it. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Let us pray together. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love, injury, pardon, doubt, faith, despair, hope. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. Where there is sadness, let me sow joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Lord, we ask that you send your spirit in us who alone has the power to transform us by your peace made alive in our lives and through us your peace made alive in the world. May the peace that passes all understanding so grow in us that we might shape the world around us with your peace. We are bold to pray these things as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join us as we close our worship today. We'll be singing a song called Canto de Esperanza, or Song of Hope. And um, the words will be on the screen in both English and Spanish. You are welcome to sing um, in whichever version you want. We'll sing it twice through. 
Um, I will warn you, it's a quick song. So if your Spanish isn't real quick, then good luck. Let's sing together. as you go out into the world, may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Mother's Day. <laughs>